Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the editor and I have been since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified ISF and THX calibrator with over 16 years of experience. In today's video we're looking at the new OLED TV from Sony, the AG9. If you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, then please like and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload a new video. The Sony AG9 review sample is a retail unit supplied by Crampton & Moore. They have kindly loaned us a brand new sealed TV from their retail stock so we can bring you an honest and in-depth appraisal of the model. Just like manufacturer supplied units, Crampton & Moore have no input when it comes to the review and no influence on the results. They loan us the TV to support our unbiased reviews. If you want to help support us and are looking at buying a new TV, all we ask is that you consider Crampton & Moore for your purchase. Their staff are happy to assist you with whatever products you might be interested in. Call Richard on 01302 365 760 or email richard.jones at cramptonandmoor.co.uk The AG9 is Sony's latest Master Series flagship OLED TV that features the X1 Ultimate Video Processing Chip along with acoustic surface audio plus sound technology that turns the panel into a speaker. The TV can also be used as a centre speaker in a multi-channel system using the provided speaker posts. The AG9 also features HDR10, HLG and Dolby Vision high dynamic range formats along with dynamic tone mapping for static metadata systems and wide colour gamut coverage. There are a number of picture presets that attempt to produce accurate to the standards image quality out of the box along with a Netflix calibrated mode. Professional calibrators and AV enthusiasts with the correct equipment can also access the Kalman for Bravia app and use AutoCal to calibrate the SDR performance of the AG9 OLED TV. The Sony AG9 is also known as the Bravia A9G in North America and is available in screen sizes of 55, 65 and 77 inches. We're reviewing a retail sample of the 55 inch model that retails for £2,899 at the time of this review in August 2019. The Sony AG9 OLED TV has a monolith style design with a small flash mounted central stand and the panel has a very, very, very slight lean back. It's not as pronounced as the AF9 model with its lean back stand and you'll not see it if you're viewing from the front of the TV, which most people tend to do. There's a 1mm metal bezel around the panel with a 10mm bottom edge that has a faint Sony logo to the far left hand side and a small LED light in the centre and this can be switched off within the menus. The stand is flush with the bottom of the panel and raises it 5mm from your mounting surface, which makes it impossible to set a soundbar directly in front of the TV. As we've mentioned, the speakers of the TV are the panel itself, with two stereo actuators vibrating the screen to create the higher frequencies and two woofers positioned at the rear of the set to create the lower frequencies. The effect of sound actually coming from the screen is a nice touch. The rear of the panel has a 35mm deep section that houses the speakers, woofers, electronics and connections. This is well designed with panel sections that can be added to hide cables and connectors for a 360 degree design effect. Cable management is also available to the rear of the TV stand with a cover to hide the cables. The connections are sideways and downwards facing on the left side of the panel looking from the front. We have speaker clips to the top of the sideways section and a common interface slot. Below this we have AV in and headphone out 3.5mm jacks, two USB ports and HDMI 1. In the downwards facing section we have a further USB port, three HDMI ports, optical digital audio out, Ethernet port, terrestrial TV antenna and two satellite connectors. All the HDMI slots are HDCP 2.3 compliant with 18 gigabits per second support for 60p, 4K, 444 signals and Dolby Vision, HLG and HDR10 support. There is EARC and ARC support on HDMI 3. The remote control on the AG9 is a smart new design that fits with the price point and design language of the OLED TV. This has a brushed metal face with a new button layout that is still intuitive to use and it fits neatly in the hand with a nice textured back section. 
The design is clean, clear and feels more expensive than the previous plastic affairs supplied with previous Sony flagship models. As we always do with our reviews, we measure the out of the box picture presets to find those that get as close as possible to the industry standards. The idea of this is that a TV must get close to these standards in at least one of its picture modes, so end users can see the content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. Calibration is a goal for many users, but for the vast majority this is just not an option, so actually knowing how accurate the out of the box presets are is a very important part in any on TV review. We use the custom picture preset for this with white balance set to Expert 1 and gamma set for 2.4 dim room viewing. We also switched off all the image processing and image manipulation features. Looking at the grayscale first, we can see that the AG9 gets fairly accurate with a slight lack of red and green energy in the brighter reaches of the scale and too much blue. Gamma tracks well and Delta E errors are good apart from a rise over the visible threshold of 3 at the 70-100% stimulus levels. However, with actual viewing material on screen, these errors are extremely minor and very difficult to actually see. The vast majority of viewers will never see these errors and the results are impressive out of the box. Moving to the Rec 709 HD color gamut, the slight blue push seen in the grayscale with the white point has moved some of these saturation points slightly towards blue. The majority of these saturation points from 75% and below are mostly in place with some small variance in hue in magenta and cyan. Again, our Delta E errors are under 2, which is well below the visible threshold, meaning the errors here are mostly invisible to the vast majority of viewers. Again, this is impressive accuracy out of the box on a retail consumer TV. Being an X1 Ultimate Master Series model, the AG9 is equipped with 2 point and 20 point white balance controls, as well as a full CMS color management system. There is also the option to use the Portrait Displays AutoCal system with the Bravia for Calman app and the correct professional calibration equipment. We did a full manual calibration as well as an AutoCal pass to see what the differences might be. As expected, we ended up with reference level results for grayscale calibration when doing a manual calibration before resetting and trying the AutoCal system and ending up with the same reference levels of accuracy with a delta E of 0.26 which is miles below the visible threshold of 3. Of note is that the AutoCal system calibrates with a gamma of 2.2 and then uses the results to map out the HDR calibration. You can set an alternative gamma of 2.4 after using the AutoCal. Color gamut results for Rec. 709 were also reference level, with average Delta E errors of 0.7 and a maximum of 1.9, which means no issues will be seen with actual viewing material for the vast majority of users. Moving to HDR and as explained in the calibration section, if you use the AutoCal system it uses the SDR results to extrapolate the HDR calibration points. We tested both out of the box results and those after using AutoCal. Out of the box the PQ EOTF tracking is slightly dark against the standard and peak brightness is 505 nits measured with the industry standard 10% window in the accurate D65 white point mode. Obviously, as we keep stressing in all our reviews and discussions in the podcast, peak brightness is just one factor to consider when it comes to HDR performance and any conclusion should be based on more than just this one measurement. The Sony AG9 tone maps the same way with all static max CLL data it receives, so it doesn't change its dynamic tone mapping for 1000, 4000 or 10,000 nits, rather it seems to work out its mapping based on a scene by scene basis where it tries to retain as much detail in the blacks, midtones and specular highlights before clipping. Brighter objects are more likely to be clipped by this approach, which retains the average picture level or APL without the image getting too dark. However, it does track on the darker side of the industry standard PQ EOTF target and images are slightly darker when compared side by side with other OLED TVs. But this is nothing to do with the peak brightness result. Rather the tone mapping and PQ EOTF tracking. 
The color gamut results are also impressive, with just a slight issue with magenta tracking for saturation. The NG9 doesn't quite reach the full DCI-P3 coverage of 100% or saturation tracking, but the vast majority of the points are close at 75% and under. BT2020 coverage is 69% XY, 74% UV, with P3 at 94% XY and 98% UV. <laughs> We start with SDR performance and the motion and upscaling performance of the Sony AG9 is first class as we've come to expect from Sony. Upscaling is sharp but without any obvious ringing or other artifacts with 576i and 1080i upscaled images. There is also no sign of any backdoor noise reduction or filtering going on. Panel uniformity is also strong with no obvious signs of banding or dirty screen effect at any luminance level. We also tested for black flickering on highly compressed material and did see a few slight instances but were not able to capture them on the camera on this occasion. And again it was only very fleeting and wasn't seen on 99% of the material we used for our review testing. Blu-ray looks superb on the Sony with excellent motion from 24 frames per second material and upscaling that is clean and sharp. Colour reproduction is also very good but the AG9 does have the WRGB white spectrum which is slightly cyan in nature even with reference level measurements and calibration. It is mostly unseen in isolation but in side by side comparisons with the Panasonic GZ1500 there were differences in white balance, skin tones and colour reproduction in both SDR and HDR content. Moving to HDR and the Sony AG9 produces a very compelling dynamic image that plays to the strengths of OLED technology with superb black levels, excellent just above black detailing and superb specular highlights within an image that is consistent in brightness and dynamic range. Colours are strong and well saturated without looking over the top or over processed. Indeed they look very natural, especially skin tones which are realistic and lifelike. Added to excellent sharpness, panel uniformity and class leading motion at 24 frames per second, film watching is definitely a strong point with the Sony AG9. We have a side by side video coming soon with the Panasonic GZ1500 and Sony AG9 but as part of this review it is important to point out just how great these TVs are with a wide range of content. It is also interesting to see the different approach to HDR tone mapping with static metadata HDR10 content. In measurements and on screen the Sony might hint at being darker, there is a difference to tone mapping static metadata. It's usually more consistent and balanced within the image without obvious clipping in the brighter areas. But there's also a slight lack of detail in the lower end of the scale. Obviously the Sony does clip bright details but in the examples that we've seen side by side the Panasonic is also a little more accurate with colour and skin tones but it's very difficult to separate both TVs with the majority of content with each approach having both pros and cons but at the splitting hair level of the scale we really are looking at the very small nuances here. Both of these screens are stunning in comparisons and isolation and the slightly different approaches with static metadata are interesting but far from deal breaking, you just wouldn't see them in isolation. With Dolby Vision content it was more obvious that the Sony wasn't quite as dynamic as the Panasonic retaining its slightly darker image tone. However, as we've stressed throughout, all the modern OLED screens are so close to each other in terms of absolute performance, it really does come down to the slight variances and differences in tone mapping and other attributes that make separating them very difficult. The Sony is a stunning OLED TV with superb SDR accuracy and extremely consistent HDR10 tone mapping with good Dolby Vision performance. It's a shame that the AG9 doesn't also have HDR10+, but this probably is also not a deal breaker for many users. Overall, the picture performance is superb with excellent colour, motion and dynamic range. The smart TV system being used is Android TV 8.0 that on the AG9 was fast and stable which is nice to experience having used previous versions that felt anything but fast or stable. We didn't encounter any crashes in our time with the retail sample and speed was always fast enough to not draw any attention to itself. 
Finally, the Android system gets close to rivals for speed, stability and ease of use, but it still has some way to go to compete with Tizen and WebOS. You also have voice assistant capability with Google Assistant directly from the remote control and the AG9 also works with Alexa. The menu system is familiar to any Sony TV user and owner over the last few years. There are a few slight changes to opening the menus and functions, but the main picture and sound menus are the same layout they have been for a number of years now. They are broken down into easy to use sections and the picture modes are easy to find. Plus when you use AutoCal it adds two more picture presets that you can use for day and night settings. The main sections of the picture menu cover brightness, colour, clarity, motion and video options. Some of the options have been cut down like other X1 Ultimate TVs such as the motion flow and film mode sections having fewer options available. But we've also seen the addition of the colour management system. Overall the smart TV and UI menus do the job and are faster and more stable than previous Sony Android TVs. Rounding up the Sony AG9, we have very few issues with the actual performance and image quality on offer. The Master Series ethos is achieved here with superb image accuracy and strong natural colour performance both out of the box and when calibrated. If we cover the slight issues first, it could be argued that the AG9 doesn't really advance the picture quality and features over last year's AF9 model, though the design is perhaps easier to live with this year. The other issue some consumers might also have with the AG9 is the pricing versus performance. We compared the 55 inch AG9 with a 55 inch Panasonic GZ1500 at £2,300 which is the same TV as the GZ950 minus the soundbar and that's available at £1,800. As we saw in the comparisons the image quality was the same level with some slight differences in HDR tone mapping performance with the Panasonic being stronger with colour and skin tones as well as much better just above black detail. The Sony had the better tone mapping for purists and a more consistent APL performance. This all makes the £2,900 price point of the AG9 a little bit expensive in comparison. Plus the 55 inch LG C9 is just as cost effective as the Panasonic models which leaves Sony at the top end on its own. SDR images look superb with excellent upscaling and motion with no obvious artifacts or issues. Image accuracy is stunning at all times with SDR film content with excellent 24 frames per second motion and a presentation that looks incredibly cinematic. HDR figures might at first look disappointing but the proof is definitely in the pudding with the Sony applying superb HDR10 dynamic tone mapping that retains image fidelity and consistency when it comes to the average picture level or APL that produces deep blacks, good above black details and more highlights without clipping. As we saw in the comparisons, the AG9 provides a nicely balanced HDR10 and Dolby Vision image. Finally, looking at the user interface, the Android TV system is now stable and fast with a nice spread of apps which also feature 4K HDR content. This is a big step up when compared to previous high-end Sony models. Plus, we like the new remote design as it now fits with the design of the TV and the price point. When you get to this end of the OLED TV market, it becomes incredibly difficult to find the one model that does everything perfectly, which is a common theme we keep coming back to. There is no such thing as the perfect TV and the Sony has plenty of strong points with excellent video processing and image quality in both SDR and HDR, which does live up to their master series ideology and comes highly recommended. We would, however, wait for pricing to fall from current levels.